So there's a distinction between temporal precision and temporal resolution. Temporal resolution is simply uh, defined by the sampling rate of the data. So if you have your data recorded at uh, kilohertz, then the uh, temporal resolution is, uh, is uh, kilohertz, and you have measurements at each time point. Temporal precision, on the other hand, is related to the amount of information that is present in each uh, time point. How much um, uh, information do you get out of each time point relative to the successive, the, you know, the previous and, and following time point? So when we think about the effects of time frequency analyses, and I'm particularly thinking about uh, wavelet convolution, but it's very similar with the other uh, time frequency analysis methods. Time frequency analyses do not change the temporal resolution of the data. So if you have your data recorded at one kilohertz and you do uh, wavelet convolution, the result of wavelet convolution is still at one kilohertz. So the temporal resolution has not changed. On the other hand, the temporal precision has changed. It has been reduced. There is um, uh, some temporal um, smoothing that is inherent in the process of uh, time frequency decomposition. And so therefore, the temporal precision after time frequency analyses is uh, less, although the temporal resolution does not change at all. So this is kind of interesting thinking about uh, the results because um, basically it means that, uh, I'll skip this slide, basically it means that there is a lot of uh, temporal autocorrelation or a lot of redundancy in each successive time point of the result of convolution. And so what I'm going to show you in this lecture is that you can uh, reduce the, um, the temporal resolution of the data to match the temporal precision of the data. This is um, really not necessary at all. It's, it's mainly useful as a kind of a convenience factor for reducing the amount of time it takes to, to write out data and import data and it just makes it easier to work with data and really you don't lose anything. You don't really lose any information. You can already see that here. You know, you can imagine uh, the any difference in, in interpretations of the results that you would come to from the, the blue signal versus the red downsampled signal. Um, and of course, you know, we're ignoring this stuff at the very beginning and at the edge. These are the buffer zones that we allocate for um, for edge artifacts and things. So in fact, in the analyses, we will never care about these uh, buffer zones. We'll only ever care about these. So now the question is, you know, if you had all the blue dots versus just the red circles, would you come to a different conclusion about the patterns of, of uh, findings? And of course, in this case, the answer is no, you wouldn't. So then um, you should prefer to uh, downsample the results um, uh, to, uh, to make all these matrices smaller and more manageable. Here you see two time frequency plots, uh, and we will see more examples of this in a minute. Um, with all of the times of the original temporal resolution and temporal downsampling. And you can see, I mean, there's really no difference between these. You know, if you look really hard, you can see in the higher frequencies, there are some extremely subtle but noticeable differences but again, by and large, you temporally downsample the data and you're not going to arrive at any different conclusion about what's happening in your, um, in your data uh, with the temporally downsampled results. Um, here is uh, uh, examples of this from a figure. This is also an example where temporal downsampling um, actually does result in a loss of information. So here you see at the low frequency, there's very little information that's lost. There are some of these uh, uh, fluctuations that are not captured by the downsampled result, uh, but perhaps this is noise, so maybe it's actually a good thing that we downsample. Here in this case, we have this higher frequency and we downsample to 20 hertz. This is, you know, it's an extreme example that I picked here, but this was done intentionally in order to show that um, uh, temporally downsampling the results after your wavelet convolution analysis can actually result in the loss of information. Um, so this is, uh, again, you know, a step of the analysis that you need to um, think about and, and test and pilot and make sure that you're doing a reasonable um, job. So let's see some of this in MATLAB. So here, 
uh, we have some pretty standard stuff. The only thing that's new here that you haven't seen before in, in all of this code is these two lines. So here I have a vector called times to save. And this is a, a list of time points that we're actually going to extract out of the result of the time frequency decomposition. So we're going to save the time points from minus 300 to plus 1200 in steps of 20 milliseconds. And here this line of code just transforms uh, or um, uh, computes the, the indices of these time vectors from the uh, from the total the full temporal resolution signal. Okay, the rest of this stuff is all standard. In fact, we don't do the um, temporal downsampling yet. Uh, typically, I would do it here. I'll show you that in the next cell. First, I want to be able to show you the results before and after temporally downsampling them. So first, we can look at. Uh, figure one, which shows the full time frequency plots for, I don't even know what I like, for 01, uh, for the full temporal resolution and the temporally downsampled results after convolution. And this is, this is an important point to, to remember that you're not downsampling the data before convolution. So when you do the convolution, the convolution is always done on the highest sampling rate data that you have available. It's only afterwards that the, the results are downsampled. And you can see that in the code here. So we end up with this variable TF, which is a uh, frequency by time vector. And this is with the full temporal resolution, 640 data points. And what we're doing here is extracting um, all of the frequencies and only these time points. So only 76 time points that correspond to these values from minus 300 to 1200 in steps of 20 milliseconds. And that's really the only difference between these two. And now you can compare these two plots. And of course, there are very few really remarkable differences. In fact, you have to look pretty hard to see the differences between these two plots. You know, here, this one seems a little more rectangular and here a little bit more circular. But again, these are such minor differences, you would never like draw different conclusions about the patterns of results in the data based on the temporally downsampled versus the full temporal resolution results. Here in figure two, you can see time course plots. This is very similar to what I showed in the, um, in the uh, PowerPoint slides. Um, comparing the full resolution to the um, downsampled uh, uh, results. And yeah, so for two different frequencies, we can, oops. I'm at zoom. Um, so we can, of course, when you zoom in, you see there are differences. We are technically losing a little bit of information, of course. We are um, getting rid of some of the results. But the, the amount of information that's lost is, is very, uh, I would say, insignificantly small. So you can compare this, you know, so now we can get every 200th time point. Obviously, this is a ridiculous situation, but you can see now I think we really are losing information, uh, even for the lower frequency result. You know, we're, we're losing a significant amount of information by downsampling the results um, to uh, to um, uh, five hertz uh, every uh, 200 milliseconds. Certainly at this higher uh, frequency, so this is not a good choice. Usually I tend to um, downsample the results somewhere around 40 or 50 hertz, which means something around every 20 milliseconds or 25 milliseconds. Um, you can see here again with the 25 milliseconds there, we are starting to lose a little bit more information. Maybe 20 milliseconds is a bit better in this case. Um, of course, how much you should downsample and whether you should even downsample depends on your um, experiment and, and what you'd be looking at. The higher the frequency of activity, the more um, uh, the, those, the larger the effect is going to be of, uh, of temporally downsampling on uh, reducing the uh, or losing information from the results. Um, here I just have a little bit of extra code to show you how I do this in practice. I don't even save the, the full temporal resolution results. So you can see I have this matrix that now I'm not defining it, or I'm already in the beginning defining the initializing this variable not to have the full length of, of temporal resolution, but only to have the length of the temporally downsampled 
results. And now here you can see when I'm averaging over trials, so AS is the analytic signal, the result of convolution with the wavelet. And here we are computing power, and here taking the average uh, over the second dimension, which is trials. And you can see already in this line, inside this, this loop over frequencies for convolution, that we are already uh, getting rid of our only saving the time points that we actually uh, want to keep. Um, and uh, yeah, so now if we run that cell, the main point of this is, is the bottom line where you can compare the sizes of these two matrices. And you can see now that we've saved basically an order of magnitude. This downsampled matrix is an order of magnitude smaller than the full matrix. Now, you know, you look at this little toy simple example and you say, well, you know, these are both tiny matrices. Who cares? Why would you even bother going through the trouble? Of course, in this toy example, it really doesn't matter and you might as well keep the full resolution. Um, but uh, once these matrices start getting much bigger and you include dozens or hundreds of electrodes and several conditions, and maybe you also have 20 subjects in these matrices, this is really going to start making a difference. You know, it might mean the difference of per time frequency data file. Um, it might mean the difference of one gigabyte versus 100 megabytes. And, uh, and maybe you say, well, you know, I have a big hard disk, so a gigabyte per file is no big deal. Uh, but it's not so much about the amount of disk space it's taking up. It's also about the amount of, of time that MATLAB spends saving these data and importing them back into MATLAB. And, you know, if you don't lose any information, then you want to be able to minimize this read in and write out time. Um, so yeah, so in general, I, I always uh, downsample the results for real data analyses, and I would recommend that you do this as well. I believe that was the end.